So our topic today uh, is going to be the biblical case for Petrine primacy. We need to get into Acts of the Apostles because there's more in here. Uh, after the Gospels, you could you would only get to see the setup for the church. You get to see the church in action. You'd only get to see Peter promise he's going to be the head of the church. You get to see Peter as head of the church and what that looks like. So uh, let's get let's go through some examples here. Uh, Acts chapter two. Peter's the one to give the speech at Pentecost. So here, here I am in Acts chapter 2. Uh, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, that's a lot of people, uh, let this be known to you, give ear to my words. And he, and he gives a speech about being converted and coming into Christianity. Why is it that Peter is the one, you know, why didn't Bartholomew step up and say, you know, I've, I've got a speech to give to you all. Why is it that Peter's the one who stands up with the eleven and gives a speech? You think it might have something to do with him? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe maybe Peter's the leader here. It's a, maybe yeah. he's the spokesman. Right. Well, especially because, uh, you know, starting early on in the book of Acts, Jesus had appeared to James, mm -hmm. who was the brother of the Lord. So he was obviously either A, one of his kinsmen, or B, he was called brother of the Lord because he was in some sense very close to him and he knew him very well mm -hmm. in some sort of intimate way. You, sure. you, but but James doesn't say, oh well, I'm a, I'm you know I'm a cousin or I'm a relative of Jesus. So let you me know. give the speech. Yeah. You know, he, he, everyone defers Peter's. To, it's Peter's time to speak, and it's not. It's not like Peter was the best spokesman either. He often said things that were really dumb. Yeah. But it's, they it's, deferred it's, to him. You know, it's 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 it's, it's almost like uh, that speech in the Lego Movie. I know what you're thinking. I am by far the least qualified person to lead us. <laughs> but and you'd be right. <laughs> but God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called and he equipped Peter to give this speech. Okay, let's keep going. There's more in Acts of the Apostles about this. So uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, you get into chapter 3. Peter starts doing miracles. Uh, he heals a man. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Peter and John were going up to the temple. A man lame from birth was being carried there. And Peter you know, heals him. And the guy gets up and starts walking and enters the temple. Uh, th this is a this is the I believe this is the first miracle that happens in Acts of the Apostles, other than the apostles all being given tongues, and Peter's the one who does it. So uh, to me, this calls to mind you know, Elijah and Elisha. Uh, Elijah had Elisha as his protege; he was training him, and Elijah had other people who were you know really enthralled with his ability to teach and prophesy and do miracles. Uh, Elijah had other people who who he thought of as. Um, you know, important people in his circle. But Elisha was there, he followed him, and when Elijah uh, goes up into heaven in a, a chariot of fire, uh, Elisha goes back and starts doing the miracles and starts having the spirit of Elijah upon him. And everyone's, oh, well, that's, that's Elijah's successor. So here in the Acts of the Apostles, it starts out, Jesus, he goes up to heaven in, the, in a cloud, and uh, Peter starts doing miracles, Peter starts preaching, Clearly, there's successorship here, and Peter has a role that the other apostles don't have because Peter's the one who's everyone's pointing to and say, "Oh, well, this guy's the one." This, if we want to talk to the apostles, we're going to go talk to Peter. I, at least I think it's very clear if you use analogies from other parts of Scripture that Peter has some kind of successor role where uh, Jesus is in charge of his church. Then Jesus goes into heaven and he designates Peter as his, as the one who's going to be in charge of his church now. And that's what we see Peter doing here in the Acts of the Apostles with the preaching, with the miracles, with the other stuff that Jesus does. Peter takes over. Does that, does that make sense? Or well, it's, it's, on it's, it's one of the reasons why we can truly say that Jesus did not leave his church orphaned mm -hmm. because he, he set up Peter as, as a primary shepherd and the other apostles as other overseers and shepherds gathered around this, this unity. There was a, a college of the, the apostles who were the first bishops. And if you read 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, mm -hmm. Titus, if you read First and Second Peter, it's all over Acts that they, they, had, they had a successor for Judas. Even for the traitor Judas, they still mm -hmm. appointed a successor for him because the bishopric still needed to be filled. The, and, and, you know, Paul went founding yeah. these churches, and he would set up bishops. And, he would designate and, and people. He Titus, would set up Timothy, bishops and elders. Are, uh -huh. and, and, and by the way, elder is presbyteroi or pres, presbyteris, which can be translated priest just as easily as it can be translated elder. Right, right. And it, it's because these people were in charge of things. Like to, Peter, uh, Paul is pretty explicit. I gave to Timothy all my authority, and now to use this authority and don't let anyone contradict you. Uh, that's in uh, say the first or second Timothy, chapter two. Uh, P Timothy was given the authority that Paul had. 
so that he could use it in this area. Jesus does this with Peter, and just like the other apostles, when they died, they needed someone to succeed them. Acts chapter one. Uh, this also happens with Peter. When he dies, somebody needs to he needs to take up the take and, up Peter's keys he, after he's. Here's gone. the thing: for us to be Bible-based Christians, and I I was raised Protestant, so that I know that's a the biggest thing in Protestantism is the phrase being a Bible-based Christian. Mm -hmm. So historically, the first century, Jesus promised Peter and the apostles, and actually, when he says, "I I have prayed for thee." that your faith will not fail. The actual better translation is like a you all. Mm -hmm. I have prayed for you all that your, as in all of your faith, that your faith will not fail. So if we believe that, that there was some great apostasy in the third century or fourth or fifth century or you know, the 10th century or what have you from, from the true faith that the, that the vast majority of the church just fell into error, mm -hmm. then the gates of hell prevailed against his church and Jesus that makes Jesus into a liar. Right, right. So either Jesus is telling us the truth and the successors of the apostles, the bishops of the Catholic church, and especially the successor of Peter, either their faith didn't fail and Jesus kept his promise or their faith did fail and it makes our Lord into a liar. Right, right. Yeah. You have to choose. Either you follow your Bible or you follow the view that Jesus was not a liar and his church does have successors for important people like Peter, uh, who had the foundational stewardship role among the apostles. Okay, I got a few, a lot more to get through in the Acts of the Apostles about Peter's role. Uh, some of this we're going to go through pretty quickly. Um, after We're in Acts chapter 3 right now where he does the first miracle of you know, healing a man. Uh, a couple of verses later, Peter addresses the multitudes of Israel, men of Israel. Here's, here's another speech he gives. And then in Acts chapter 4, Peter speaks to the Sanhedrin. And in fact, at the beginning of his speech, he says, Rulers of the people and elders, here's my message to you guys. And that, that's in Acts chapter 3, verse 12. Uh, verse, Acts chapter 4, verse 8. So uh, Peter speaking to the uh, Sanhedrin, uh, who he explicitly identifies as rulers of the people, he speaks to all the people of Israel, we not only see that he's acting as spokesman for the, all the apostles, but he's also acting as leader here. Because uh, if you're going to have uh, someone who's going to go speak to the leaders of another group, you want to send your leader, if you can, to talk to them. Not to mention, you have a chief. You have all the chief priests of the nation of Israel and the mm -hmm. scribes who who had the authority of binding and loosing in the old covenant. And Peter's basically standing up to them and say, "Well, that authority is with me now." Like right. Yeah, right. yeah. P Peter has a lot of evidence behind him that he's supposed to be in charge of the apostles because he acts like it. Okay, another one. This one's this one's pretty critical. I'm actually going to read read some out of this one. Acts chapter five, uh, verse. Uh, it starts with verse one. So uh, a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is a pausing for a second from the scripture here. This is a really great example of how the early church worked, and it shows that it had hierarchy and leadership here. They didn't just bring it and lay it down at anyone's feet and say, oh yeah, you're, you're going to designate you as our mm -hmm. pastor for the day. The apostles were in charge. Okay, so he lays it down at the apostles' feet. Verse 3, but Peter said, <laughs> okay, right here, so right off, uh, Peter's the one who's speaking for all the apostles. He's having things laid down right there. Uh, in front of all of them. In front of all of them. Peter said, quoting the Bible again, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of the land? Okay, so this is, this is pretty key. Side note, he's reading souls, which is a miracle that some, which is a gift that some priests still have to this day in the Catholic yeah, Church. How did he know? How did he know that Ananias lied about this and said, oh, I'm going to give all the proceeds, but then he doesn't. How did he know that? It, mm -hmm. it doesn't say that Ananias told the apostles, I'm going to give all my proceeds to your you know, to your stuff. It says he withheld some of it. But Peter knew that he had made this promise, maybe to him, maybe to someone else, and that he wasn't keeping it. Yeah, he's like he's like Padre Peter Pio. <laughs> Padre Peter Pio Peter. <laughs> but he knows, and he, and he knows that it's a lie to the Holy Spirit. It's not just a lie to men. You didn't just lie to us and promise us. You promised the Holy Spirit in your heart that you would do this. And you know, that's what, even what he says. He, Satan has filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit. This is a private thing that this guy uh, made, a private promise. And Peter sees it and he says, 
uh, while it remained unsold, did it, did it not remain your own? Mm -hmm. you, know, you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to make this promise. After it was sold, was it not at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. He's explicit here. This is a private thing that this guy made. He's reading his soul. So Peter's acting as judge here. Among the other apostles, Peter steps forward. He's got things laid down at his feet. This is very leadership sounding. Uh, then Ananias heard these words. He fell down and died. So a couple, uh, not long after that, an interval about three hours, it says in verse 7, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Notice this, he's interrogating now. This is a very judicial role here that Peter's uh, acting in among the other apostles. We should note too that he keeps saying, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Why did you lie to God? It's so as if he speaks for God. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, like lying to the apostles is lying to the Holy Spirit. You have not lied to men, but to God. Okay, so she says yes for so much. She, that's how much she sold, sold the, um, the the land for. It doesn't tell us what it was, but it was so much. So Peter said to her, this is verse 9, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Hark, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and died. Okay, so... Peter here has a clear, a very scary role in leader, leading the whole Christian community and in p taking responsibility for even, even things that are of mortal danger to people. Peter is uh, really a very serious force to be reckoned with in the early church. All the apostles are standing around watching this happen, and Peter's there in the midst with things getting laid down at his feet. He's... Uh, people dying at his feet he's, he's commanding he's inquisiting you know he is uh, he's being a pope it's, it's mm -hmm. what he's doing okay so moving on from acts chapter 5 where peter acts as judge and indicates his role as head there acts chapter 5 still in chapter 5 verse 15 more miracles you know people are lining up uh it says in verse uh, 15 lining up here. the streets with their sick and diseased so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and pallets that so as that, Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall. Yeah, so that so them. much of his, so much as his shadow. People could fall lining up to have Peter's oh, shadow. Well, by the way, who's a figure that people usually line up in the streets for so their babies can get blessed and their sick and diseased can, can get, be yeah. healed and so much as the the person's shadow can fall upon them and who who's looking for for it's very reminiscent and, and, of scenes from and, the who, gospel. and who's looking for spiritual comfort and it's not only re reminiscent of Jesus but uh, that figure is still here today. Yeah, that's the Pope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, he's right there in Rome, and people still do this. They line up and they hope that Pope's shadow might fall on them, or that they might get a relic, or that their baby might get kissed by him, or that someone might get healed. Because you know, Pope sometimes. And, are and by the way, gift. anybody could research into several miracles that have happened because Pope Francis has prayed for babies or prayed mm -hmm. for a diseased person. Many miracles have happened even under the pontificate of Francis. Right. So it happens. It's something that I mean, this isn't a gift. That is permanently given as the gift to you know do miracles for people. Some popes have it and some don't. But it starts in the Bible that people treated him as if he was a leader, and they did things like lining up behind him to have his shadow fall on them. It's very it's reminiscent of things that happened in the Gospels. It's reminiscent of things that happened today with the Pope. Uh, it's it's very indicative that Peter was the leader of this spiritual community. It doesn't say people were lining up to have you know Philip's shadow fall on them. They weren't lining up outside of Philip's doors, but they were doing, at least not from what we know, but they were doing it for Peter. And it was important enough that Luke, writing this, is like, i got to note this down. Someone was in charge of this thing. Acts chapter 5, verse 29, Peter speaks to the Sanhedrin again. We don't need to go into a lot of this. It's A lot of it's similar. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 24, uh, Peter visits the Sumerians. Okay, so this one's a, a key one. People will bring this up. Half-breeds. <laughs> People bring this up and say, you know, the people of Samaria, you know, the, Peter was not the one who converted them. That's my pop, by the way. Sorry, folks. It was it was Philip who converted the Samarians. Peter wasn't in charge. He didn't convert the Samaria. You're, you're right that Peter didn't go convert the Samarians, and that was Philip. In Acts chapter 8, Philip goes and converts the Samarians, and he goes back and he says, Guys, the Samarians have received the gospel. I just, I just left them. And... Peter's like, I have to go see this. So, so he takes John along, and they go to visit the Samarians, and he talks to them. He says, have you received the gospel? Yeah. Have you been baptized? Yeah. And he starts confirming them. He lays his hands on them so that they can be confirmed in the Holy Spirit. Peter's the one who visits with John. He brings John along with him, and they start 
uh, fulfilling what Philip had begun. This is another indicator that Peter's in charge here. Uh, some, someone begins a work and Peter comes along to finish it. He also meets Simon you the Magician. You could say he's confirming it. You could say he's confirming his brethren. <laughs> uh, at, and he also meets Simon the Magician here and he, you know, uh, warns him that if he continues doing bad things, uh, his money will perish with him. He tries to buy, you know, the uh, the doesn't gift he try to the Holy Spirit. buy apostleship basically? Something like that. It doesn't say apostleship, but it, it looks like that to me. He's, he wants to be able to confirm people and have the Holy Spirit fall on them and speak in tongues like Peter's doing. Uh, and Peter With a little says, bit of the occult on the side. Yeah, Simon the magician ends up being a bad guy, but you know he starts out as a bad guy too. Okay, so Acts chapter nine. Um, this is one that's a, a lot of times not focused on in apologetics literature, and I think it's kind of I think it's neat. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. The church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. Pause for a second. I'll stop reading the Bible. That's like the extent it had spread to so far was these Jewish areas, um, uh, Galilee, Samaria, Judea, back to the Bible. Had peace and was built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it was multiplied. Now, as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints that lived at Lida. Lida, I, it's L Y D D A, um, end quote. So, right here, Peter's visiting all the churches. He's he's going around and he's seeing, making sure everything's you know ship shape. This is very leadership like. The Pope still does this. He makes apostolic visitations to America, to you know Greece, to other places where Catholicism has big churches, and he sees how things are going there. But it starts with Peter in the Bible. It doesn't mention any of the other apostles doing this. Peter's the one who goes around to all the, as it says, uh, went here and there among them all. That's a lot, you know, and he makes sure everything's in good shape. So, you know, he's exercising an oversight role here, but similar to maybe you might call it confirming his brethren, yeah. like what Jesus said he was supposed to do. You might call it, as Isaiah 22 said, being a father to Israel. Yeah, it's being said as well, a father. And, and actually, in, in uh, I think it's Galatians uh, chapter 3, but somewhere in the book of Galatians, St. Paul says that the church is the Israel of God. Mm -hmm. And throughout church history, um, basically until the rise of Calvinism, I think, uh, everywhere, uh, Christians everywhere called the church the new Israel. And, it, and it's so true. Isaiah chapter 22 prophesied that there would be someone who would have a key, who would have authority to open and no one shut, and who would be a father to his people and a peg of security for the house of Israel. Well, prophecy fulfilled. It's yeah. happened. Uh, okay, so Acts chapter 10, another thing that Peter's unique for. He is chosen to reveal uh, that Gentiles can be Christian too. So this happened, this is after Samaria and after some uh, the Ethiopian eunuch who was like a convert to Israel who had been converted. Uh, a bunch of Gentiles converted too. And Peter's chosen to reveal that this is okay. See, God appears to him in Acts chapter 10, verse 27. And, uh, and Peter says, as he talked with uh, Cornelius, he went in and found other persons gathered. He said, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit any one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And he reveals that they can be Christian too. This is, and then Peter gets asked about this by the other apostles in chapter 11, the, chapter 11, verse 1, the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him. And he tells them, God appeared to me and revealed this to me, and we're supposed to do this now. We're supposed to let everybody in. The people will bring up that, you know, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, and they'll say you know, he had a bigger, wider audience than Peter, because Peter was the apostle to the Jews. But for some reason... Even though Peter ended up being a martyr in Rome. Yeah. So he had a pretty wide audience. But for some reason, God picked the apostle to the Gentiles, specifically Peter... Or, I'm sorry, the Apostle of the Jews, specifically Peter, and he said, you're going to have to reveal this to everyone. That the doors open wide for anyone to come in. Well, Peter get a, gets a huge role here uh, that's indicative of his special relationship with God, that he's got some kind of, uh, some kind of earmark to say, this guy's right. going to be the one to and, reveal this message. And actually, the Catholic Church has been more zealous throughout its history of evangelizing all the nations and showing no favoritism or partial, partiality to race than literally any other church. I mean, the Catholic Church is present in literally, literally every single country on the planet. 
Yeah, and, and it's just like what Scripture said: "All nations, go with ye therefore and make disciples of all nations." Prophecy, full, well, it's a it's a command, but it's also indicative of what was going to happen, and it's happened. So uh, we we're doing what Christ commanded. Uh, Acts chapter 15, this all comes to a head, this whole Gentiles can come into the church thing, a lot of people weren't okay with it. Acts chapter 15, there's a big council where they have, where they have debating, uh, and, they, and they go up to Jerusalem, this is in verse 3 of Acts chapter 15, or verse 2, uh, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, uh, pause, the people who didn't want the Gentiles to come in, back to the Bible now, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. Awesome. Okay, we're going to get a debate here. All right, they, they debate, chapter verse 7, it says, uh, And after there had been much debate, Peter arose and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made choice among you that by my mouth the nations should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And then he gives a decision that the, you know, the, the, uh, they, they can let the Gentiles in. So uh, that's a big reveal right there. Like, it's a reminder, it's hearkening back to the Gospels. God made a choice among you. It, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> God made a choice that someone was going to be the one to preach this message to all the nations, to preach his Gospel to all the and, nations. And when Peter says his peace, I'm pretty sure the, the Scripture also says, and, like, they, everyone kept their peace or everyone fell silent. Verse 12, and all the assembly kept silence. There was debate. Peter speaks. All the assembly kept silence from there on out. It wasn't like they, okay, he's done speaking now. Let's have a rousing debate again. Yeah. <laughs> they kept silence after that. It was like, okay, we're done. It's been, it's, it's finished. And they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related, you know, the similar thing. God had done work among the Gentiles. And it, and it moves on. The council decides this is going to be the decision. The Gentiles can come in too. Hey, this clip was taken from the full show, which you can listen to at historyandapologetics.com or at our YouTube channel, History and Apologetics.